Hey there, let's chat about celiac disease and IBS and how to tell the difference between the two. Did you know that celiac disease is actually super common? And sometimes, if you're experiencing occasional hard stools and diarrhea, it might be a good idea to get tested for celiac disease. There have been several studies that show celiac disease is way more prevalent in patients with IBS. So if you have IBS with a diarrhea component, it's a good idea to get screened for TTG. That stands for tissue transglutaminous, but we'll just call it TTG for short. But here's the thing. Some people with celiac disease might have a negative antibody, so a negative TTG test doesn't necessarily mean you don't have the disease. It can get complicated, but an upper endoscopy and biopsies from the small intestine might be necessary to get a definitive diagnosis. Now, there are cases where you might have a positive antibody and a negative biopsy, or vice versa. Or you might have both negative or both positive. Confused yet? Don't worry, you might also have a positive genetic profile, which could help with the diagnosis. But here's some good news. If your symptoms persist despite interventions, going gluten-free might be worth considering. A lot of people choose to live gluten-free for a variety of reasons. They might find that it helps them feel better overall, probably because there's less fermentable matter in their gut, which eliminates the cause of many symptoms like bloating and gas. This fermentable matter is actually fructans, a FODMAP found in many gluten-containing grains. Who knew gluten-containing grains could be such troublemakers? It's important to note that most people with IBS don't actually have celiac disease. They might just have a sensitivity to gluten, or feel better when they eat fewer gluten-containing grains that also have fermentable carbohydrates, FODMAPs, called fructans. But if you've been following a gluten-free diet, it might interfere with testing for celiac disease so keep that in mind. Here's an important fact. The longer celiac disease lasts, the higher the risk of developing small intestinal tumors or other tumors. Yikes! So if you do have celiac disease, we encourage you to stop eating gluten. But be warned, gluten can sneak its way into all sorts of things like tablets, toothpaste, and even ketchup. Going gluten-free takes a little bit of work, but it can make a huge difference. Plus, intestinal biopsies might come back with mucosa healing, which is always a good thing. And that's our mini podcast for today. See you next time.